Listener Production. Welcome to the Motorsport Brief. What an awesome weekend of motorsport with some supercar stars from down under taking on NASCAR. And that is the focus of this edition with a guest who made his cup debut. G'day everybody, Rusty here. Welcome to another ep of the Garage Shortcast. Cam Waters has kindly called in following a tough finish to this weekend's round at Sonoma. We don't want to hold him or you for too long. Quickly, thank you for the feedback on our latest feature episode with two-time Australian rally champion Rob Herridge. He is a good storyteller and even if you're not into rallying, the yarns are more widely appealing than that and funny too. From thinking he was world champion material, the way that he attacked his first ever transport stage, it wasn't even and competitive to the deep ties with Subaru and the formation of a successful family business, Maximum Motorsport. The brutal lesson his uncle taught him around the psychology of sport and winning to becoming a pretendineer, as he calls it. Working as a young bloke on the family farm taught him engineering skills that serve him in motorsport to this day, arguably better than a degree. Plus, winning his second Australian title before he'd even received the first. That'll make sense when you listen. Just search for it in the Garage Library. Now, Supercar Series leader Will Brown raced for Richard Childress with support from Peter Adderton's Mobile X. They had a couple of engine issues on Saturday, electrical problems in the race. He made a flying start to practice that really turned heads. Shane Van Gisbergen went back-to-back, a win at Portland, followed by a brilliant performance to take out the Xfinity race there at Sonoma. It sadly was a DNF for Cam Waters for Roush Fenway Kozlowski Racing in their Stage 60 entry, but he's been good enough to come on for a chat just before boarding his flight back for the Darwin round of supercars this weekend. Hello, mate. Hey, mate. How you going? Knocking on the door of the top 10, things got pretty wild at Turn 11 there, and unfortunately it wounded the Mustang. What happened and what was the actual analysis of the damage? Yeah, so... I'm not sure. I think it was a gold Mustang, um, Josh Barrier. I think he just got a bit optimistic and, and turned someone and, um, yeah, just got caught up in someone else's accident and, and got a heap of bent, you know, steering, um, damage, um, moved the splitter and all that stuff. So she was pretty wounded after that. So they, they kind of fixed it a little bit, um, in the pit as much as we could. And, and then, um, yeah, kind of got taken out properly at the end. <laughs> While the result after running so well is probably a little bit of a, a bit of pill to swallow, how do you feel about the overall experience based on what you've written on socials? You've had an unbelievable time. Yeah, I've had so much fun. You know, it's a bit of a bucket list thing for me to come over here and, and do a, a cup race on a road course. And um, I just wanted to enjoy the experience, have fun. And um, yeah, I've definitely done done that, had a lot of fun, had some you know, really cool battles today with, you know, some really cool names. And, um, you know, we're looking really good there for, for a little bit. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to let, you know, the, the incident put a dampener on, on my whole week. Sonoma um, is a beautiful place. What were your impressions of it, of the track? And were there any, you know, aspects of it that reminded you of other venues that you've raced at? Yeah, beautiful part of the world, and I wish I could have spent a few more days here and, and enjoyed, you know, the, all the wineries and stuff. So, um, anyway, got to go back to Darwin, but uh, the track it was it was very cool. Like the undulation to the first sector was was crazy. Um, kind of remind me a little bit of Bathurst, to be honest. And you know, some real fast flowing corners around around the back, and you know, turn ten that reminded me of kind of like Pukekohe last corner. So. Uh, it was a lot of fun to drive. I loved it. Commentators said on Friday that you made a withdrawal from the luck bank. That was an amazing save. Uh, was that all about tuning the rear of the car up, as I think you reflected in one particular interview? I mean, the track had been resurfaced and so on. Uh, yeah, we we rolled out of the truck and our cars were, were super loose, all the RFK cars. And, you know, I'm trying to get my head around the car and, and trying to find the limit. And, um, you know, I found it. A little bit too quickly, <laughs> quicker than I would have liked to, um, for sure. But I was lucky that, you know, I didn't get any walls or anything like that. And, and um, you know, we could press on and, you know, finish that session off. And, and we, you know, made the car better for, for qualifying and then better again for the race. I think you talked on the Supercars website about these cars being a little bit closer to the current generation of of Supercars. Just expand on that a little bit if you can. What, what stuff was was a bit easier to come to grips with perhaps than what you have imagined? Yeah, the like the gearbox is very similar. Well, it's the same, I'm pretty sure. The brakes are very similar. Um, 
the big thing is just the weight. They're so much heavier than a supercar back home. So, you know, you really feel that weight. Um, but, you know, it kind of felt a little bit like a Gen 2 car, to be honest. So I felt right at home once I kind of got used to it. Um, you sit down so low in them and, you know, the safety in the cars are probably probably a lot better than the supercars back home, probably just because they're racing on ovals going so much quicker and crashing a lot more than us. But, um, yeah, it was it was cool to kind of just experience everything. How tough was the welcoming? Give people a sense of the level of competitiveness, the kind of um, step up. And did the other outings help prep you a little bit for that? Yeah, I think racing in Martinsville and, and Kansas definitely showed me the level that everyone's at over here and, and how aggressive everyone is. And, you know, the race today, like, once I got into the race, I think just because it's my discipline, I, I felt a fair bit more at home than, than I was in the truck on an oval. But they race super aggressively. And, and if you upset someone, they, they'll they tell you, you know, I, I upset someone today, he's giving me the bird and run into me and stuff. And, you know, you just you can't do that at, at home. But I was laughing. I thought it was awesome. Cool. What about the reception generally from fans? And, and I guess... There was a little bit of a home element insofar as I think Jack Perkins was there, uh, Greg Murphy, Roland Dane. There was there was a bit of a contingent trackside, wasn't there? Yeah, I had a lot of you know family and friends come over and and you know a fair few from the supercar paddock. So it was awesome to see all those guys. Um, you know, even the driver intros that I walked out, I actually got a really big chair, so that was pretty cool. And um, you know, we had some people from AUKUS and stuff in in the corporate area, so that was um, you know that was really cool. Excellent. What about the week that you had in the lead-up? All the stuff you did beforehand, even the fun hanging out with Shane Van Gisbergen and uh, and uh, Will Brown and so on. Yeah, it was, it's been an awesome week. It's been action packed. Like we flew in Sunday, then we got in at you know eleven thirty at night. We were straight on the simulator at the team. You know, doing seat fits. Um, you know, caught up with Shane, caught up with Will Brown. We were playing volleyball at some little bar thing you know <laughs> nine o'clock at night one night that was that was awesome i actually beat will brown in volleyball if anyone wants to know um so that was a small little win for me um went and shot some guns so yeah we, we tried to fit in a few other you know fun fun things on the side as well you said i think that you'd you'd kind of love to do a bit more of this have you explored a bit of that discussion where are you at with the chance to maybe come back and do some more um Oh, I haven't haven't really explored it at all yet, but just kind of wanted to get through these three races and um, just I think it's just digest it now. And um, yeah, we'll we'll look at calendars going forward, and I'd love to go do some more for sure when we can you know fit it in with the supercar stuff. But we'll um, yeah work through that. Cool. In digesting that, what have you enjoyed the most about it? Um, I think it's just challenging myself. You know, go over, step into a different discipline. And, um, you know, see how I go and, you know, what I like and what I don't like. And, you know, it's kind of like when I jumped in a sprint car, like I felt like I was starting again in some ways, but I love the challenge of, of trying to work it out and, and be competitive in it. And, um, yeah, that's why I wanted to do the oval racing. So definitely, uh, it was definitely challenging and there was definitely a lot to learn, but, uh, you know, I really love that and wanted to embrace that. Great result for Kyle Larson. We're kind of hoping that we can entice him down under over summer. We'll get to that in a second. But just just quickly, where do you think on paper? I know it's ifs, buts, and maybes, mate. But where do you think you could have finished today? Ah, oh, that's it's a tough question, mate. Like um, there was one point my, my crew chief come on the radio and said we're effectively P two on strategy. So that was that was pretty cool to hear. Um, but you know there were so many cautions and so many pit pit stops. Why well, had one more pit stop to go? um at that point but you know so much so many things can happen but um mm. yeah I was, I was running around with um with my teammate chris um and i think he finished p3 in the end so i would have liked to say that i could have kind of finished in the top 10 cool finally on the nascar side of things were there little nuances you had to get used to spotters and things like that what was all that process like yeah, there's, you know, the spotter was definitely something that's, that's new to me. Um, I really needed the spotter when I was in the trucks at, you know, Martinsville and, and Kansas. Um, this weekend wasn't too bad because I had a, a rear vision camera and, and, you know, it's, it's what I do. So I, I felt like I didn't need him as much, but still, still really relied on him. Um, probably like the big thing with a car, like you have to lift to change gears instead of, you know, a gear cart in our car. So 
Um, there's a few times I got you know hung up on the, on the limiter. Um, just yeah, little things like that. Don't go away. Our conversation with Cam Waters continues in just a few moments here on Rusty's Garage. This is the Motorsport Brief, a little weekend review of NASCAR with a supercars flavour given the presence of it there in California this weekend. Cam Waters has been good enough to call in before jetting home for the next supercars round in Darwin this weekend. We'll talk about that in a couple of moments' time. Let's get back to the combo now. You're about to head out to uh, get ready for Darwin next weekend. You had an awesome weekend in WA. Are you kind of confident you can keep that Wanneroo form going at Hidden Valley? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think we've kind of found a little bit of a balance with our car, a bit better of a base setup, I should say. Um, and I'd like to think that's going to work in Darwin. So, yeah, we were fast in Darwin last year. We we qualified well. Um, we caught on fire in one race. We rebuilt the thing and, and we raced forward in the other races. So, um, yeah, I think we, we'll go good there. I think going to kind of Townsville, a different track, that'll be probably – more interesting to see if our, our new setups work there, but mm-hmm. um, so yeah, we'll be right. I know it's been a work in progress, but broadly speaking, do things feel like they're a bit more even between the cars now, or, or, or are you getting there? Um, yeah, I, I think supercars have done a really good job in the off season. Putting them in the wind tunnel just kind of tick the box, and you just move on from it. And, and this year, we just haven't really had to talk about that. And, and you know, there's been a little bit of talk about the engines. Um, Definitely, definitely better this year. I think, um, you know, they're still working on that, but, you know, they're, they're a lot closer. A couple of fun things to finish here. We talked with Craig Lowndes on the shortcast in the past week about the Adelaide 500. What an unbelievable array of support acts that are going to be there this year. Will you do double duty and get behind the wheel of a sprint car? We know you've been loving that over summer. Oh, don't tempt me, mate. I'd, I'd really love to. I'm going to have to try and get a free roll from Tickford somehow. I don't know how they're going to feel about it. But, um, yeah, like, I think if I'm racing for a championship, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't do it. Um, mm. But, you know, if we're not really in the championship hunt, then we might have to have that discussion. Definitely. What do you think of that news? I mean, the temporary track they're going to build, some of the names that are being rumoured to be coming out and so on. It's a massive undertaking, but huge potential. Oh, it, it's awesome. It's it's so good for, you know, SA. It's so good for, um, I think, supercars as well. You know, it's going to drag a lot of fans from the sprint cars to supercars, and it's, it's so good for speedway and sprint car racing. So um, I think it's only a good thing. Hopefully, you know, all the guys that are racing can put on a good show, and, and it's a good event, and it's something that maybe we can do a little bit more moving forward. I know this will give you a smile to finish. A few fans have messaged and asked about the XB Resto. Congrats. <laughs> Supercars Power, Rob and the Rides by Cam team look like they have done a beautiful job. What is that thing like to drive? Did it turn out even better than you perhaps imagined when you embarked on that process? Because it was a couple of years in the making, wasn't it? Yeah, it was about five or six years in the making. Um, wow. I, I first bought it and I wanted to do a fair bit of it myself, but it quickly outgrew my skill set. So... I had to find someone that had better skills than me. <laughs> and um, Rob from Rise by Cam definitely uh, took us to the next level. And yeah, definitely turned out way better than I thought it was going to. I've driven it about 1K up the road. Um, <laughs> so that's that's all I've driven at the moment. I've got to get a wheel low and down. I've got to get a dyno. I've got to get it registered. So that's the next project. Well, next thing I've got to tackle when I get home after Darwin. All right, very funny infomercial with you and your maniac mate Thomas Randall on socials too. He does that way too well, I think. I know, that whole, it's worrying, that whole sales it? guy, doesn't he? It's oh, a worry. It's a, real it's worry. a worry. It's very good. Hey, um, congratulations on on what you've done. We hope um, that it is just the beginning, mate, and and um, that there is more to come NASCAR wise. Have a fantastic back end of the year in supercars. No doubt we'll talk again at some stage, and one day we will do a long form chat about your uh, your career, mate. But that's for for further down the track. Go well in Darwin. Yeah, thanks for having me, Rusty. See you, mate. It is such a feather in supercars cap to have those drivers over there. Progression and giving them international opportunity, I reckon, is something that should be encouraged more often. Where possible, the calendar should avoid things like the Le Mans 24-hour, Spa, Nürburgring 24-hour too. 
in my opinion. A couple of quick bits of news before we go. Good F1 race in Canada with some changeable weather. Max Verstappen scored a hat-trick of wins there at Montreal. Lando Norris and George Russell on the podium too. Oscar Piastri fifth. Daniel Ricciardo eighth and in the points despite being penalised for a false start. Will Power is back in the winner's circle in IndyCar. He was on the pod in recent weeks. You may have heard that. We are so proud of him here. A tough season last year on track and off has made him, as we talked about in the shortcast, hungrier than ever. Power is now top of the point standings too. It was a Penske sweep of the podium there with Indy 500 winner Joseph Newgarden coming back from a massive Saturday crash to take second and Scott McLaughlin third after looking like being the driver to beat in the early part of the race. The Australian Racing Group has announced that the Bathurst International this November will be the last. I'll be there. I really enjoyed it last season with the TCR World Tour, and it is a shame that those teams aren't back with us this year. What should the Bathurst Council do? Is it time to kind of just condense a bit and not have too many events at Mount Panorama so that those that are fortunate enough to have a place on the calendar, like the 12-hour and the Bathurst 1000, remain truly special. It doesn't dilute the power of that place. Maybe there is room, as one fan, I think, expressed on social media for a Goodwood-style event. I know that's been spoken about before, but it needs to be done right. On a separate note, the forthcoming doubleheader Shannon Speed Series event at Queensland Raceway has now been amalgamated into one meeting in August. Check their website and socials for details there. This basically gives that event the cachet that we've enjoyed at the Bend recently and at Phillip Island before that with an epic lineup: Trans Am, TCR, GT and much more. While no one wants to see a change like that, it's actually ended up a good result, in my opinion. Congrats to Team Australia. Toby Price and Paul Wheel won the Baja 500 in their trophy truck. That is a massive achievement against some big names in off-road. And while we're on that subject, a shout-out to all the finishers in the Fink Desert Race in the Northern Territory. Just getting to the line of that gruelling event is a massive achievement. The bikes was still underway as we recorded. David Walsh led at the halfway mark, aiming for his fifth win in a row on two wheels. And congrats to Bo Robinson. After six podiums, he's finally got an outright Fink win in the four-wheel division. Now, Ford looked like winning the production class in the Raptor again after Craig Lowndes suffered what's thought to be a suspension issue in the Silverado on the run back to Alice Springs. Chaz Mostert is set to join us ahead of Darwin's Supercars round and will preview that with him and the GOAT Ricky Carmichael who's just been at the Isle of Man TT we're hoping to get him on in the next fortnight as well thanks for listening everybody bye for now 